Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, One Inch Digital interview, and today we are we're being hosted by Mr. Stewart from Use uh, Agricultural Tanzania Limited. This is one among the agribusiness company that has been doing great for a couple of years since independence. Tanzania might be celebrating 60 years of independence, but this company is older than that. So we're going to hear a lot of stories, a lot of experience from Mr. Stewart, country manager who use uh, agriculture Tanzania in Tanzania. How has been the journey? You are celebrating more than 60 years. Tanzania, we are celebrating 60 years, but you are going older than that. How has been the, 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 the journeys uh, operating in Tanzania's uh, landscape, especially in agriculture docket? Um, Hughes Agriculture has been an entity in, in Tanzania since 2010. Okay. Um, but the company was established long before that. The, oh. uh, the company was established actually back in the, the late 1940s yeah. and has undergone many, many different trading names during, during the last several decades. So okay. we were uh, very well known throughout the region in East Africa as CMC Group, CMC yeah. Motors, yes. and um, the, the mother company in, in Kenya is still known today under, under the trading name Hughes, uh, sorry, CMC Motors. Yeah. Um, over the years we've been through CMC Land Rover, mm. CMC Tanzania, CMC Hughes, mm. and, and finally in 2010 uh, we, we ended up with, with our current name okay. as it is today, which is Hughes Mm. agriculture where we established two trading businesses Hughes agriculture for for specifically agricultural uh, products and mm. Hughes motors for uh, passenger vehicle light and heavy mm. commercial vehicles so obviously it's uh, it's a company with with deep roots okay. in Tanzania um, not just within the automotive industry but with within agriculture specifically okay. um, which moving forward is is more and more at the forefront of our focus mm. in Tanzania as a business mm. is, is the agricultural uh, industry in general. Okay. Um, there's obviously a huge amount of mm. uh, potential within mm. the agri segment in mm. Tanzania mm. Um, and that's something that we definitely want to be a part of moving forward. Okay. Uh, maybe for those people who don't exactly have a clue about what uh, use uh, international, uh, sorry, use agriculture Tanzania has been doing. Would you tell them uh, what exactly are you doing in Tanzania? So fun fundamentally, we we support. Uh, we we are the importers of New Holland agricultural equipment, okay. um, which is predominantly tractors in mm. Tanzania. However, we do um, deal with combine harvesters okay. uh, as well as tractors, mm. um, and and quite a, a scale of. Um, a variety mm. uh, in tractors. You can find 50 horsepower tractors mm. being sold to, to emerging farmers, okay. up to 600 horsepower tractors being sold to uh, commercial sugar operations. So mm. there's, there's, there's quite a scale of variety. Mm. Um, we are also the importer for Nardi um, agricultural implements. Okay. Um, we also have a long-standing relationship with them. Mm. Um, so anything from um, a two-disc plow or djembe, mm. as you call it, up to precision planters, boom sprayers, uh, self-propelled boom sprayers. Mm. I mean, again, there's there's a huge variety of mm. um, of implements that we bring into the country and have done for for many years. So, we are predominantly selling tractors and implements. Mm. Uh, we also obviously offer uh, spare parts and and service across the country, mm. um, which we're we're going to get into some some rather exciting grounds uh, this year and into next year okay. um, and obviously we, we cover all the warranty work that's associated with these products in the market as well mm. um, what we do try to do um, we try to offer uh, as, as many flexible finance terms to our customers mm. okay. because it's it's uh, it's very clear that uh, not every a uh, farmer in Tanzania has the capacity to capacity, buy yeah. in cash, so we mm. have to also link those customers to uh, finance partners, commercial banks, leasing partners, mm. where they can access um, the required funding to, to purchase these uh, equipments um, okay. so that we can promote mechanization. Okay. 
Who are your real target uh, customers? Do you talk? Uh, do you really uh, um, talk about these or those uh, large scale farmers or even the small orders? Like, if I am, um, I'm just um, a maize grower. May I uh, uh, approach use um, agricultural law for, for example, for an ag agricultural law implement? May I? I may I be in that position? We work constantly towards providing access to our products to a wider scale, okay. a wider audience. Mm. So the short answer is yes, we can, we can supply you with a tractor. Um, if you have upwards of 20 acres of land, okay. um, we will find you a solution okay. to finance your tractor and implement. Okay. Um, previously, it would have been impossible. Um, okay. And in previous years, this is, this is one of the, the big challenges that mm. we faced when trying to um, you know, implement this vision of mechanizing mm. uh, Tanzania, um, that a lot of our customer base are small scale or emerging farmers. Yes, we deal with commercial um, agricultural businesses, yeah. but our bread and butter, mm -hmm. so to speak, is small-scale farmers. Small -scale farmers okay. And typically, um, what would happen in the past is if you owned less than 100 acres, mm -hmm. and very many of these farmers mm -hmm. do own less than 100 acres, they would not be eligible, they would not fit in that bracket okay. Of, okay. Of, of, of eligibility for financing. Mm -hmm. So through years of lobbying, um, we have convinced uh, now new players to come okay. um, into the market and, mm. and support us by signing MOUs with Hughes Agriculture. Okay. Um, and that's offering us an opportunity to get to more small scale farmers who have 50 acres, even below 50 acres um, of land who, mm. who would like to have our products um, to basically increase their yields okay. uh, and productivity and, and put more money in their pockets so that they can grow, mm -hmm. which is what we're here to support. Okay. You know, organic growth through mechanization. Mechanization. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, established a strong presence in Tanzania, uh, more than 60 years old. You've been in Tanzania, you've been operating in Tanzania. You have also been doing the same quite uh, in Kenya. Can you just give us uh, the difference, Tanzania market and the Kenyan market lately? Kenya, Kenya is a is, is a fairly developed market uh, mm. in terms of agriculture. Um, mm. If you if you lay them out side by side, there's mm. there's a number of differences, and okay. and some of those notable key differences, mm. um, which for me are exciting, mm. uh, and for you as a Tanzanian will also be exciting, yeah. is that. Number one, the, the, the land mass of okay. Tanzania, um, in comparison to a country like Kenya, which mm -hmm. is approximately, I think, 580,000 mm. uh, square kilometers, Tanzania yes. is almost 950,000 square oh. kilometers. Um, That's huge. Kenya's arable land represents 10% of its land mass, whereas in Tanzania, mm -hmm. nearly 50% of that 950,000 square kilometers is arable land. Yeah. And where it starts to get really exciting for, for, for a, an importer like Hughes Agriculture that mm. deal with products that support mechanization, mm. a small percentage of that arable land mm. is cultivated. Mm. Um, I think approximately one third of that arable land is, is cultivated. Mm -hmm. And out of that one third, mm. 20% mm on average, mm. is cultivated using tractors. Okay. The rest is done with manual, manual. Uh, cultivation mm. or animal cultivation. Okay. So the opportunity to scale up mechanization, still we have 80% growth in what land is already cultivated, mm. which will take years. Mm, that will not happen overnight. That's, that's yes, a lot of not work. An overnight job. And, and that is a lot of tractors and a lot mm. of implements. Uh, okay. Once that bit's done, Mm. We then have to think about the remaining two-thirds mm. of arable land which is still to be cultivated. This mm. is land which has not yet been purposed, not yet been purchased, okay. not yet been cultivated. Okay, so the opportunity for growth, when, when agriculture starts to become more exciting mm. to more uh, younger Tanzanians, and I mm. believe it will, mm. um, through mechanization supported by financing, 
once that access to more affordable financing and the, the profitability mm. of agriculture business is visible to mm. the younger generation, mm. there will eventually be some kind of rush okay. to buy land yes. in Tanzania yeah. to do farming. Okay. Um, and, and that, I think, is where we're heading. And that's something that, that I definitely want to be a part of. Okay. If, uh, if, if you have to tell uh, someone else out there who's watching us right now, how would you want uh, your customers to perceive you as a huge agricultural Tanzanian? I would like our customers to perceive us as a company that can find solutions for them. Okay. Um, obviously, our, our priority is to um, to provide farmers with agricultural equipment, tractors mm -hmm. and implements. Mm -hmm. um, but the job doesn't start or end there. It's, it's, it's just the beginning of a journey. And, and if we can provide mm -hmm. access to funds through one of our panel banks um, to support mm -hmm. our customer to get the tractor that they want, the implement they want, then I see us as being an agricultural solutions provider. And that, that ultimately is the goal. If, if people see Hughes Motors as the place that they can come to get into agriculture or to go from where they are today to the next level in terms of agricultural growth, that, that, that for me is the goal, to be a, an agricultural solutions provider of choice. Okay. Almost 7% um, of uh, population uh, is living in rural areas, and we we assuming we assuming that uh, those uh, that population is within we are finding smallholders farmers, and that's your target customers. How yeah. do you get to 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 know them? How do you get to connect with them? Uh, as you are uh, establishing here in Dar es Salaam, why those are there? So you raise. A very very important point here. Mm. Um, like I mentioned, Tanzania mm. being 950,000 square kilometers, mm. it's not easy to reach everybody. Yes. It is it is extremely difficult. Definitely, and trying yeah. to reach our customers mm. um, in places like Babati, Katesh, uh, mm. anywhere anywhere in Manyara, yeah. uh, northwestern zone, um, Tanga, mm. Lindi, and Trara. It's really difficult. Definitely, it's yeah. it's 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 something that we've tried to overcome um, with with various solutions, um, including sub dealers, agencies. It's it's been really tough, um, and and we've not quite we've not quite got the the, the correct solution until now. Okay. Um, so something that we're doing differently mm. um, this year mm. and into next year is we are expanding our branch network for the first time. Okay. We've seen the opportunity um, coming in, in 2021 uh, thick and fast. Mm -hmm. there's, there's now uh, a lot of visibility that shows um, commercial banks and lenders are getting more excited about agriculture. So now is the time for us to grow. So basically we are expanding our network into 10 new locations. Okay. Um, this year we are opening branches in Kahama, okay. uh, Kilombero, mm -hmm and Kibaigwa regions. Kibaigwa regions. Okay. These will be open next month. Okay. Um, so everyone from Kibaigwa, Kahama and Kilombero, mm. you know, we are, we are coming to you. Um, next year we're opening seven more locations. Those locations will be revealed as we, as we go over time. Mm. Um, but ultimately, why it's so important that we be near our customers is mm. that if you take one of our tractors and your your farming in Kilombero. Mm. If you need to buy spare parts or just do a service on your tractor, mm. the likelihood is that you're either going to be waiting for parts to be shipped or you're going to be on a bus coming to Dar es Salaam or Arusha to, mm. to, to purchase those parts. Yes. And that's not practical. If you have a warranty concern, mm. it's days as opposed to hours. Mm. So th the challenge is we need to be a lot closer to our okay. customers, which is the plan. Mm. Um, three locations this year bring us into three of our main hotspots. And okay. we, we analyze the market to understand what sort of units we have in operation, okay. number one. Number two, what are the key 
commercial projects happening okay. in the country. Okay. So, for example, Kilombero, yeah. uh, Ilovo Sugar, Ilovo in, sugar. in, in, in uh, Kidatu, mm. in Kilombero, is a very exciting opportunity for us. We know we have to be there. Okay. There is an immense grower community already in the valley. Mm. Uh, many of those are existing customers. Mm. Many of those are customers that need our products and services. Okay. So being able to, to be closer to our customer mm. um, and potential customer doesn't only mean that we can serve them better, mm. it also means that we can monitor their success. Okay. We can understand when they're growing mm. and how we can assist them with that growth path. Um, so there's, there's, there's a bit of both. There's a bit of managing the existing network mm. and, and also being there for, um, for the next batch of, uh, of, of emerging farmers who are looking to get into agriculture mm. who need somebody to support them. And we are there as solutions providers to do that in those regions. Okay. What, what, what type of legacy do you want to leave when you are not there, when you are gone? Mm. <laughs> Certainly, I would, I would, I would like to, I would like to think that the groundwork mm. that we do today mm. will set a precedent for incremental growth within agriculture, and that is all about mechanization. Um, it, it, there are many stakeholders now that are waking up to the idea that agricultural uh, business is, is, is the, the future mm. um, and, and many refer to it as the backbone of Tanzania and I think that's a, that's a very accurate statement. I think, I think agriculture is the backbone of Tanzania. Um, but I would, I would certainly like to see that not only Hughes agriculture mm. but every agricultural supplier and um, every stakeholder in uh, support of agricultural growth, mm. including the banks and finance partners, continue on this path of um, of promoting mechanization. Yes. Because you know the, the sky is the limit, okay. um, and my vision for Tanzania, at least, is given the world is going to be facing challenges with food security. Mm. I would like to think that whatever I can do mm. in short to mid term will help have an impact on food security. Okay. I would like to see Africa feeding Africa. Africa okay. Forget the rest of the world okay. because they're going to come knocking one day. But I would like to see Africa feeding Africa. Um, and mechanization is, is critical to converting certain cash crops like sugar, mm. where Tanzania have still today a deficit and import sugar. Mm. I would like to look at the news one day and see, mm. you know, Tanzania are becoming one of the biggest sugar exporters in Africa. Okay. That, that for me is what I would like to see. And I believe very, very soon that will be a real reality. Give me one thing that you think is a drawback to smallholders and of Tanzania, and you think that drawbacks. If uh, if there was some justification, then uh, that drawback, when that drawback is gone, that means uh, now we will soon see our sector is lev um, is levitating. I think um, I think outgrowers and small scale farmers um, suffer from a number of of obstacles, I think mm. the first being access to affordable financing, okay. um, which is something that I see being addressed now. Mm. Um, access to affordable finance. Okay. Um, historically, getting access to, to agricultural asset financing has been extortionate in Tanzania. Mm. But bringing more players to, to the table, commercial mm. banks like NMB, mm. CRDB, yeah. driving competition mm sharpens the pencil mm. when it comes to interest rates and lending through asset financing mm. to, to the agricultural business. Mm. And I think that's predominantly one of the big things that can help the small scale farmer um, get into mechanization mm. and grow within mechanization. mechanization okay. um, better cost of capital mm. allows these small scale farmer to, uh, farmers to, to, to make more income. Mm. They can then buy more land and they, mm. can, they can be profitable and grow more quickly. Okay. Um, I, think, 
another of these challenges is um, as, as there are a number of commercial projects happening in Tanzania yeah. where the farmer is somewhat guaranteed uh, with his off-taker mm -hmm. uh, arrangement to be, to be getting paid well because he can compare it with, uh, with neighbors and, and, and with others in the market. Mm -hmm. There are still many um, who do not have the luxury of being uh, part of such commercial contract. Okay. Therefore, their off-taker agreement can often be um, you know, using SACOs, AMCOs or agents okay. where that farmer may not be getting the full benefit of his hard work, his or her yeah. hard work. Yes. Um, so, so I believe the more commercial activity that we see Mm -hmm. um, the more security there is for the small scale outgrowers to, to, to earn their worth, okay. to allow them to grow. Okay. I think that's also important. Uh, where should we see Hughes after five years to come? Five years from now, yeah. I see Hughes as the go-to agri hub. Okay. Within Tanzania, um, today we sell tractors and implements. Yes. Tomorrow, I want to be offering more and more solutions to our customers. Okay. So, the long-term goal is not just to be able to to come and purchase a tractor with an implement, mm. um, but to be able to purchase a tractor, implement, seed fertilizer, mm. irrigation systems, um, everything that a farmer would need to become mechanized mm. straight away. Straight away. And to provide financing for that package. So uh, the goal is, is to get there. Um, the first step of that goal is to open as many branches across the country as we can. Three branches this year, seven branches next year. Um, but my dream would be to have 20 plus mm. branches across the country. And they would not then be limited to just tractors and implements. They would be able to provide um, every, every service and product that a, that a farmer would need um, to either be able to start mechanizing or to go you know, to the next step. Mm. Um, and I, I see that being um, uh, not an unrealistic uh, okay. vision. Um, and, and certainly within the next five years, um, I believe it's possible. Okay. Um, obviously, we've, we've, uh, we've had a hard time um, getting close to our customers mm. without a branch network. Mm. What we've started this year, yes. um, which has certainly helped facilitate um, a, a, a much stronger uptake from the banks is yes. Every tractor that leaves our facility mm. comes with a, a two-year free service okay. package, package, which is spare parts, lubricants, mm. oil, um, and tools. Okay. And our customers are trained on how to use these and how to, how to operate the tractor before they leave our premises. So okay. they leave with their tractor, with mm. their implement, and with two years worth of spare parts and, okay. uh, and lubricants. Um, so what that does is Two things keeps mm. the keeps the customer happy. He's mm. got everything in a box for the next two years, yes. and it keeps the bank happy okay. in terms of risk mitigation because they know that that customer is not going to have downtime on the tractor. Okay. The tractor is not going to be you know parked in a field somewhere waiting for spare parts spare to arrive parts, or a yeah. technician to arrive because he's got everything he needs. Yes. So um, this is something that we initially thought would um, help sustain. Um, customer satisfaction until the time that we got our branches open, mm. but because it's been so successful, we're now we're now going to be extending this offer uh, into next year while we open the branches. Okay, uh, I think you heard clearly from the house's mouth that uh, Hughes has been doing different things in different way to make sure that uh, our smallholders in Tanzania they are just getting their feet to their ground and actually they uplift their lives by starting small. There are hundreds of tractors and other agricultural implements, apps for grabs. All you need to do is just follow the 
character approaches and ways how you can get you can get all that from using agriculture in Tanzania. And thank you, Mr. Stewart. I think this is not just <laughs> the end; it's just the beginning of. This is the beginning. Yes, this beginning is the beginning of the chapter. Of a very exciting. Journey. Yes, 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 and I believe that your presidency is going to be. Um, uh, it's going to be a uh, wonderful and it's going to be a potential to other to other uh, farmers and we're looking forward to your more increased in engagement in agriculture and other sectors if you can yeah so thank you I hope thank so. you thank I you very much so. and thank, thank you. you too you've been watching this i know that this is not a boring activity but it's just a learning <laughs> it's a session that you can learn a lot of stuff on agricultural Docket. My name is Malik Mongujit from Money Digital, and this is just the end. Thank you for watching and have a good time.